What's up guys, we are chapter 5, the analysis of ray data and we're going to use the differential method and if you don't remember why are we using this is essentially because we are, well let me go back, we are defining rate loss or we are postulating or analyzing what type of order is this so essentially we are using or seeing what type of n is our reaction Many times you don't know it, you just work with the, your reaction. Maybe you find it on the internet, that's true. But many times you will not be able to, or you are using a special a reaction, a very different reaction, so you want to get that rate of reaction law. The first method we're going to see is called differential method. Why differential? Because we are working with the differential concentration of A with respect of time. So that's why it's called differential. We're going to force a x y graph, which is y axis, x axis. Actually, we're going to see. We are, of course, not going to use y. We're going to use other variables suitable to concentration and time. And x will be concentration or so. We will analyze only these three orders, guys first order, second order, and zero order. But you can use it for, the, uh, for any order you want. So you can actually analyze it for yourself, third order. We will get the y-axis, which is the derivative of concentration. That's what well, differential method means. With respect of time, so that's essentially this thing here. That's our y-axis. The slope of our, let's say, straight line or whatever we get will be the reaction order, or the order of the reaction. Let's say it's alpha. So if alpha equals 1, you know it's first order. If alpha equals 2, you know it's second order, whatever. And the x-axis will be our concentration of A at any moment. So let's develop this. You know from our batch equation that this is the case. You got this and your rate of reaction. We're going to find a model. Let's say it's first order. Actually, we don't know. Let's say it's alpha order. Maybe alpha may take values of 0, 1, 2, whatever. So, yeah, let's go with this. Our rate of reaction, as I told you, it's k times concentration of A to the alpha power. So let me just put this here, which is essentially this here. And I'm going to take natural logarithm on the left and on the right. So on the left is just that parenthesis, of course. And to the right is the natural logarithm of this. By rules of natural logarithm, you know that if something is multiplying, you can separate it. And if something is uh, to the power, you can take it out, to the, out of the logarithm. So that's why it's here. And yeah, as I told you, it's split. So that's why I'm adding. And as you can see, you have this value here this other set of value here, this set of value here, and other set of here. So, let me just tell you once again, we are going to use our y, as I told you here before, our y-axis here, and yeah, this y-axis is the derivative of concentration with respect of time, which is essentially what we told you here, and the b will be the concentration, or well, let's say B is the intersect, so when X equals zero, what value does Y takes? Well, it will be natural logarithm of K. Our slope is going to be the order, and our X value is the natural logarithm of X. So, just be sure that these guys are the natural logarithms. Now, remember that the slope M is equal to the order of alpha, so this here Many, well, many math equations use this uh, nomenclature, y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope, remember slope is by definition at any moment, difference of y between, uh, divided by the difference of x, and b is the, let's say, the intercept, the y-intercept, so it's here, when x equals zero, how much is the value of y? And once again, that's the order. So we're going to use the difference of y is essentially the natural logarithm of any value, let's say value 1, minus the natural logarithm of that value or second value. And of course it needs to be 
this that says the y axis so we need to find also the x axis which is natural logarithm of the concentration of the first point minus the natural logarithm of the concentration on the second point and that's how you calculate the order so easily maybe you will get number 1.98 which I will say it's second order or maybe you get 0 0.01 I will say it's zero order and even 0 0.92 I will say that's first order depends on how flexible you are maybe you know that you your lab is not that able to get uh, concentrations or exact concentrations so that's why we need this to approximate the best case scenario is you get uh, 1.0001 that's obviously its first order now how do we calculate the rate constant or uh, k the constant of Arrhenius um, where is it? yes it's here so you've seen before we got this equation essentially just need to send this to the left here and you will have this minus this will give you the natural logarithm of k so you keep developing that and you know that the negative can you can send it inside the natural logarithm but you need to send it dividing so that's why it's this value divided by concentration so you know this natural logarithm and yeah you can take out the natural logarithm here, so x to x, and you take out the natural logarithm, so that's why you get k here, and you get the differential here divided by the concentration of a. And of course, you need to know by now the alpha value. So if you don't know the alpha value, you will have one equation with two unknowns, and you cannot solve it. But as I told you before, you can solve it here. You don't need k to get these values. So at the ending, you're going to get alpha, the order, and k, the rate constant. So that's great, because you can now use that rate of reaction, rate of a with respect to ca to the alpha power. You got k, you got alpha, and you will be able to use it in your models. So there's one detail I wanted to tell you. We need to find the value of differentials because I told you, you you use these values and these values and probably you're asking which values guys or which value you're talking about why do I have 0.1 and 0.2 where do I get those values that's very interesting that's the actual part that needs to be used another method for example we will be using the graphical method which I don't really like that much we're going to analyze the numerical method which is okay the only disadvantage is that you need different values or changes of temperature, ah, sorry, time, and the polynomial fit, which is great, but is you're doing it by hand, it takes time, and if you're using a computer, well, that's pretty easy, but you need a computer. So everyone has, it's good, it's bad, advantages, disadvantages, it's up to you what you are wanting to do. And in the next one, we're going to see the graphical methods, because we're going to be analyzing how to use the differential method. So we need to apply more methods to that differential method. See you in the next video. What's up guys? It's me, Chemical Engineering Guy. So if you like the video, why not push the like button? It really helps me to know if you're liking the videos or if I should be changing something or if I should be adding something, taking out content, whatever. Also, sharing is caring. So if you got any kind of friends, teachers, colleagues or whatever kind of person that might be interested in this type of content, why not share it? Sharing helps our community to grow faster in members and in content. If you want to keep track of my activity, videos, uploads, experiments, playlists, whatever content I'm getting on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button. Subscribing to the channel is totally free, guys. My dream is to create an online academy of chemical engineering, where everyone can access it in the world. Imagine a place in which the student, the teacher, and the engineer get the best of each other. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for the support and the love.